As the coronavirus has upended all of our lives and routines, we've become reliant upon certain essential workers to help us stay as safe and healthy as possible. Of course, this includes medical professionals who can treat those who do fall ill. But it also includes a class of workers many of us have previously taken for granted. Delivery people who make it possible for the rest of us to stay healthy by staying home. Since the crisis, Americans are turning to delivery services more than ever before, and gig workers for Amazon Flex, Uber Eats, Instacart, Postmates, Grubhub, Shipt, and DoorDash are helping people fill their basic needs. These delivery people, especially those shopping for and delivering food, risk exposure every day as they bring groceries, pre-cooked meals, and packages straight to our front doors. We never have thought of people doing these kinds of jobs as frontline workers. Uh, in many ways facing risks that have parallels to healthcare providers and first responders. Amazon is struggling to keep up with demand for grocery deliveries and is hiring 175,000 full and part-time employees across its warehouse and delivery network, as the recent surge in online orders has caused uncharacteristically long delays. And Instacart is bringing on 300,000 new gig workers, which the company refers to as shoppers. I was going to the grocery store anywhere from 8 to 15 times a day. Sometimes I'll be in a store and there are more Instacart shoppers than actual shoppers. I don't mind the work, but at the same time, since these companies don't provide any sort of health insurance or any health care benefits, you really got to watch out for yourself. The current moment has brought long-standing concerns about protections for gig workers to the fore. And now, discussion is swirling about what these companies ought to provide in a time of crisis. Many workers are pushing for hazard pay, higher wages that acknowledge the increased risks they now face. But most companies aren't offering it. While many companies are now beginning to offer personal protective equipment for workers, for the past month, many delivery people have spent their own money on supplies. They expect me to spend money keeping a constant supply of wipes, hand sanitizer, Lysol. It's just, it, it's not fair. But with over 16 million Americans filing unemployment claims over the past three weeks, gig economy jobs are in higher demand than ever. This work can entail delivering packages for a company like Amazon, delivering pre-ordered food with the likes of Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub, or Postmates, or shopping for and delivering groceries with apps like Instacart or Shipt. Workers can set their own schedules, accepting orders or signing up for shifts through the app itself. It's flexible work and it's easy to start. Some markets have been known to have long wait lists of potential workers ready to start delivering at any moment. However, this does make it hard for those who are frustrated with the job to agitate for change. Whenever somebody decides, you know, I'm not going to do this anymore, I feel like we're not treated fairly, I'm going to quit the app, there's 10 people in line right behind you to start working to, to basically cover you. These gig workers aren't technically employees, so they can't unionize. This means it may take legislation at the state or federal level to see meaningful change. But in the meantime, their services are what allow the rest of us to stay home as much as possible. There's a lot of people who are using this for the very first time, and especially for people who are vulnerable and susceptible. I, I, it's a really important thing for them to be able to have this. Demand for many delivery services, especially groceries, has spiked in recent weeks meaning workers must make a tough choice between increased earning potential and their own safety. On a single day in mid-March, downloads of Instacart were up 218%, and downloads of Shipt were up 124%. We're putting more hours in than we've ever done before. Usually I work about uh, 30 to 40 hours a week doing these gigs, and the last two weeks I've been pulling at least 55 to 60 hours. Instacart reported on March 30th that shopper earnings had increased by more than 40% month over month, and shoppers, on average, were seeing a 30% increase in customer tips. Average earnings for these apps, as reported on Glassdoor, hover between $10 to $14 per hour, except for Amazon Flex, which promises a base pay of at least $15 per hour. For many of these gigs, the pay structure is ever-changing, an opaque formula that takes into account factors such as items ordered, distance driven, how long the order took to complete, plus tips. Small tweaks can instantly change the income of hundreds of thousands of gig workers. But what these algorithms don't take into account is the risk workers face delivering during a pandemic, as they ferry packages, groceries, and meals to people's doors. 
we walk up to the counter we're touching you know door handles and cash register machines like the credit card scanners we're still touching all of that the longer we all are working from our homes the more we're going to need people to provide us food and packages and all these kinds of things so in the short term i think we have the formula for um, increasing risk on more people uh, and the intensification of some of the problems we've been discussing. Instacart shoppers also noted that in the first couple weeks of lockdown, grocery stores were especially crowded, which made it difficult to shop efficiently while also socially distancing. Costco has been one of the biggest qualms for us, and it's also one of the most demanded uh, stores on the app right now. These frustrations and concerns have driven some away. While Perales used to work for Instacart, he says he has no interest in doing so during the crisis. You're talking about hundreds of people in the grocery store at a time, 30 minute long lines. It's just not worth putting my health on the line. Tensions among Instacart workers culminated in a strike on March 30th. They demanded that Instacart provide shoppers with free personal protective equipment hazard pay, and an expansion of paid leave for those impacted by coronavirus. The strike wasn't us, like, wanting to start a fight. We're letting out a cry for help and just, like, throw us a bone during these, these times of crisis. Strike organizers said thousands of workers participated, meaning these regular shoppers didn't log into the app or make deliveries. But Instacart said it had no effect on business and claimed there were actually 40% more workers than usual on the platform on the day of the strike and that the company had set a record for groceries sold in a 72-hour period. Instead of a strike, it's, it was more like a boycott, and those don't work. There's always going to be people to take those shifts, and there's always going to be people to take every order. But even satisfied workers say these companies could and should be doing more. I feel as though with Instacart, as, as, as well as it's doing, and it is a good company, I think they have the resources to send us some uh, supplies to be able to keep people safe especially gloves and hand sanitizer. There should be some requirements and even a training video with a quiz following, which is what we have to do when getting approved to deliver alcohol and pharmaceuticals. Three days after the strike, Instacart said it would provide face masks, hand sanitizer, and thermometers to its shoppers. I'm not worried about myself getting it. I'm nervous that I may get it and I'll never know, but then inadvertently just spread it almost in an entire county of my state, that's what worries me most. A study led by the National Institute of Health found the virus is stable for up to 24 hours on cardboard, two to three days on plastic and stainless steel, and three hours in the air, suggesting people may become infected after touching contaminated objects. These companies have already changed some of their policies to help keep customers safe. For example, Instacart, DoorDash, Grubhub, Postmates, Shift, and Uber Eats have all put tools in place so the customer and delivery person do not need to interact. Now we can do contactless delivery. That is one thing Instacart has done a really good job on. And then we leave the at the door, we take a photo, and then that gets sent to the customer and they know they can come outside and get their groceries and after we've left. Furthermore, Instacart's announcement that they'll provide protective equipment for workers comes on the heels of similar promises from other companies. DoorDash allows workers to order hand sanitizer and gloves free from its website, not including a small shipping fee. Grubhub says it will start shipping protective equipment to workers in mid-April, and Uber Eats and Amazon Flex say they're now distributing masks to drivers. But when it comes to dealing with delivery people who have already fallen ill, some report frustrating experiences. Most of these companies have promised to pay workers impacted by the pandemic. Amazon launched a $25 million relief fund to provide quarantine seasonal workers and delivery drivers with two weeks of paid leave. Uber, Postmates, DoorDash, Shipt, and Instacart have made similar commitments. But for many, applying for this pay has been difficult. Initially, many companies required proof that a worker had contracted coronavirus, but testing was severely limited. When Perales feared he'd come down with the disease in mid-March, he ran into a number of bureaucratic hurdles before he saw any money. I went to the hospital just to be safe because that's what Uber told me to do. They told me that it sounded like I might have COVID-19 and that I should self-quarantine. Uh, they weren't doing tests at the time because they were rationing the tests. There was a nationwide shortage. From there, 
you know, I was fighting back and forth with Uber trying to get some sort of compensation because by that point they had actually suspended me, but they hadn't paid me anything yet. Eventually, Prowlis says Uber paid him $317 after BuzzFeed News contacted the company about his case. This amount was meant to cover his two weeks of self-quarantine, which he says is far below what he would have normally earned. In a statement to CNBC, Uber affirmed its commitment to its drivers and delivery people and said it has a team working around the clock to support them. But it's of little consolation to Perales. They're paying us lip service, but they're not actually taking any actions to keep the public safe, to keep their drivers safe. Others say that expecting much more out of these companies is unrealistic. In most states, they aren't required to provide additional protections or paid sick leave. And that's just how the contractor-contractee relationship goes. Generally, the cost of doing business is on the contractor, but then we write off our expenses on our taxes. So I would never expect them to just give me stuff. If they did, that would be great. But legally, they don't have to, and they're generally not going to. It may ultimately take new legislation that changes the dynamic between gig workers and their employers for these companies to actually provide delivery people with the protections they're asking for. We really need to redo our employment laws, not only for the protection of workers, but for the protection of society. I think the pandemic has demonstrated in such a clear way the interrelated nature of all of us. And what sometimes binds us to one another are workers who are doing this kind of work. And when they're not adequately protected, we all lose protections as a result of that. The $2 trillion coronavirus stimulus bill offers a ray of hope as it extends unemployment benefits to gig workers. We have an opportunity to rebuild an economy that's stronger and that plugs some of these gaping holes that have been revealed. In the short term, though, many delivery people and gig workers in general will probably be left in the lurch. States are scrambling to process the record number of jobless claims they've received. And initial reports reveal that many gig workers are encountering the same difficulties as Perales, hitting a bureaucratic wall when they try to collect payment. But even as they struggle to make a living in this new reality, many hope the crisis will be a turning point. I'm glad people are waking up to the reality that the way things are now, the, the sort of protections that we have or don't have, they're not adequate to weather a crisis. There's a cultural shift that's about to happen. These, these workers that are considered essential, they're, I feel like they're going to be treated with more respect after this. And I think it's up to us, everybody, to make sure that that positive cultural change is permanent.